And it's something that I've been talking about for a while with some of our students and some of our coaches about beginning. This first episode will kind of just cover a couple different things that we're looking to achieve by starting this podcast. So one of the things is that our students constantly ask us some basic questions that we feel should be some common knowledge for someone who is learning Muay Thai and training Muay Thai or is interested in Muay Thai. Uh, on top of that, too, we also see a lot of these questions that are put on onto public forums. So to kind of tell you a little bit about us and who we are, uh, we have two martial arts academies, uh, one in Ventura, California, and one in Santa Barbara, California. Our first one in Ventura, California, started back in approximately 2014. Uh, we were subleasing a location. Mm -hmm. uh, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Got one of our coaches texting us right now. But um, we also have another location that we just started with the sublease uh, this year in 2019 in Santa Barbara with Coach Ryan. Uh, he's one of the people that actually <laughs> pushed for this podcast. And uh, on top of that, too, uh, one of the things that Ventura kind of grew into, like a full-blown location, kind of by accident, but we've really uh, embraced that over the past few years. Uh, with today being uh, September 18, 2019. Uh, so that's going on uh, over four years uh, serving our community here in Ventura, California. Uh, on top of that, too, our specialty is Muay Thai. So we are primarily a Muay Thai academy, and that's uh, the specialty that I've chosen for myself. Uh, I started training about, let's see, when I was 18 years old. Uh, and I've been training ever since. I'm currently 30 years old. Uh, I'm the chief instructor for Kuku Muay Thai Incorporated, uh, right of the curriculum and overseeing all the training processes and our coaches, our staff, uh, program directing and things of that nature too. Uh, along with that as well, uh, I've competed as an amateur and as a professional in Muay Thai competitions. Uh, we've also had successful stints in coaching, uh, both nationally and internationally both in Thailand, Mexico, Europe, uh, Canada, um, down, and I'm working on getting down into <laughs> South America uh, for our team as well. Uh, also working on some connections over in Scandinavia, which I think is going to be a cool place because um, Sweden definitely has a lot of talent over there. It'd be cool to get some of that talent over here as well. So... Uh, I can't tell you how many times that I've stayed at our academy after hours kind of just discussing different ideas with our students, things like technique, uh, maybe we're talking about training principles that we went over that day, things that really kind of reverberated with them, or maybe they've seen used in competitions, and yeah, I'm serious, we end up talking for hours just about that. Uh, we also got into stuff like uh, sanctioning bodies, if you're not familiar with what a sanctioning body is. Uh, you know, we'll definitely get into that, but just kind of give you a gist of what it is. A sanctioning body is basically a governing body that regulates uh, combat sports. So the term sanctioning body came from boxing, and it was something that was used to help regulate boxing back in the day uh, when boxing became legalized. So uh, with Muay Thai, especially here in the United States, there's a lot of different sanctioning bodies, uh, and some of the ones that are here in the United States are also international. So we'll definitely get into that because it's a topic that I feel a lot of people should know about. Uh, and that kind of goes into the topic of, you know, what it, what it takes to grow the sport here in the USA. There's a lot of people that are pushing our sport to grow here in the USA. And I feel that, uh, you know, those people should be spotlighted and you should definitely know who those people are. Uh, because they're doing a lot of really cool stuff. And I don't think people can quite grasp what the magnitude is for what they're doing and kind of the uphill battle that they're having in order to do that as well. One of the other things that I constantly find us talking about is like different training ideas, regimens that we see some of our students implementing. Uh, there's of course a lot of information that's available now. 
out there on the internet, and it's something that wasn't really available when I first began training Muay Thai uh, over 13 years ago. It's something that you're starting to see more and more different styles of Muay Thai. As my crew always told me, uh, crew knock read, was that there's no standard for Muay Thai. There's plenty of different training ideas, standards for how you, uh, competi- competitors should be training, and things like uh, how many kicks you should be doing a day, how much you should be running, what kind of running you should be doing, what kind of knees you should be doing, what kind of sparring you should be doing, clinching, pad work, what kind of pad work, more hand oriented, more leg kick oriented, more elbow and clinch oriented, more just your boxing oriented, depending on what that student needs to work on. So that's another topic that I would like to cover in there as well. Not to mention uh, accountability plans that we see are that are implemented for different martial arts schools, different martial arts academies that have combat sports programs with people that are actively competing in combat sports competitions. There is a ton, and I mean a ton of information in regards to that because it's something that kind of bleeds over into the fitness industry. When we talk about accountability, first thing that you always think about is like maybe a journal that's something that I kind of reverberates with me because it's personal accountability but also coaching and check-ins and things of that nature but it also goes into what a coach would ask for accountability from their students so that's another thing that we end up talking about another thing I'd like to cover in here is things like upcoming fights competitions that we have for our students things that I think that I've heard about that I'm really excited about Maybe some of our other coaches are really excited about and want to share with our students. We have so much more that we'd like to share, but that's kind of the general idea for what we'd like to share for you guys. Not to mention our experiences overseas in Thailand. We do bring our students over for Thailand training camps. It's something we've been doing for a few years now. It's something that I feel will help really grow the sport here in the United States as well. If we help other people understand what it is that we're trying to do here for the sport in the U.S., In short, this podcast will serve as a way for Putu Muay Thai coaches and instructors to help share what we know about Muay Thai, as well as some guests that we have on the show and some of our competitors and students, and seek to continue to learn as students ourselves while talking about what we are involved in in the martial arts world, because there is a lot of us that are doing a lot of cool things in the community, and I really want to seek to bring them in here as well. One of the first things I'd like to cover is that we do have quite a few events that we have coming up that we are excited to kind of share with our students, stuff we've been announcing in our academy, uh, things you may have heard about on Instagram or Facebook or our newsletter. Um, this Saturday, we actually have, uh, I'm, really, I'm really excited about this one. I'm actually working the corner on this one as well. Uh, we have our student, uh, Jeremy Montijo. He's going to be competing this upcoming weekend at Commerce Casino for Lights Out Promotion, which is uh, actually professional and amateur mixed martial arts promotion. This is actually a rematch for Jeremy, uh, Mr. Montijo, as I call him. Uh, you know, this is actually something where he actually lost a decision at 135 pounds in the bantamweight division. Uh, again, this is for the Lights Out Amateur California State title. So Lights Out Promotions has actually done uh, some professional, I think professional Muay Thai and amateur Muay Thai events at, uh, what was that casino? Oh, man, uh, not Commerce. <sighs> man, I, Hollywood Park Casino, that's what that is. So they've actually done events at Hollywood Park Casino. Uh, I know the promoter is an Armenian man. I can't remember his name for the life of me. It's uh, George, and his last name starts with a B, I believe. But he's been around martial arts for a long time. So I think this will be definitely a, an event that you guys will definitely want to check out. They've been doing some pro and amateur cards uh, at the Burbank Marriott, uh, along with like kind of like what that means, what professional mixed martial arts and amateur mixed martial arts in California means. It kind of differs state to state, but one of the big differences here in California for amateur and professional is that for amateur, there's things like uh, the rounds are a little bit shorter. I don't think that five minute round, I don't know too much about amateur MMA, so don't take my word for it as a gospel, but for amateur MMA, here in California, they're going to do three two-minute rounds. They're going to wear, uh, I believe it's eight-ounce uh, MMA gloves that they're going to be wearing. There's going to be one-minute break in between. 
they're a little bit more, I guess you could say, as referees, more apt to stop it since it is amateur. And they do want to see these guys go over to the professional leagues and start making money. As an amateur, you don't make any money except for stuff like ticket sales or commissions, other things that you work out through the promoter. But for the most part, you're not getting paid to show up and perform. So that's what Germany will be competing for on Saturday, September 21st, 2019 at Commerce Casino. So if you haven't been to the Commerce Casino, it's actually in the city of Commerce here in California. Uh, I think it's technically East LA. But the address for it, if any of you are interested, is 6131 Telegraph Road in Commerce, California. The area code is 90040. Sorry, not the area code. That's the zip code, Doug. Uh, 90040. So the doors open at 4 p.m. And the event is pretty much sold out from my understanding. I know Mr. Montijo does have a few tickets left, so it's something that you know you might want to contact him. If you guys hear this before the event, you might want to contact him, because that might be your best bet to get in. Along with that, Mr. Montijo is currently a 2-2 two and two, uh, competitor in amateur MMA. What that means is he has two wins and two losses in amateur mixed martial arts. I was there for his amateur debut. That was awesome. One of his wins. Uh, one of those losses is from... Uh, his pro, not pro, sorry, amateur debut that he had with his first amateur event that I helped corner with when he just began training with us. The second one was against this uh, competitor that he's competing against this Saturday. Mr. Montijo is also one and one in amateur Muay Thai. He actually competed out in the regional U.S. Muay Thai Open Tournament out in Arizona last year. I know he won his first match and he lost his second in a decision, so a three-round decision for that tournament in amateur Muay Thai. So this bout, again, like I said, it is a three-round competition that he's going to be competing in. It's uh, three rounds, two minutes, which is the usual setup, like I mentioned, for amateur MMA in California. And uh, just a little bit of details, like on uh, Mr. Montillo. I, he didn't really tell us about himself when he came in, but it's kind of things I found out through his friends and family. So Mr. Montillo is a CIF wrestling state champion here in California during high school. He was wrestling out of uh, Camarillo High. So being a CIF champion here in California is a big deal. Those brackets are completely stacked. So this is something that helps him out a lot in mixed martial arts. Uh, as well as like kind of uh, in Muay Thai, we have our clinching, which is like our stand-up grappling. And it's something that I've really been working with Jeremy on to make sure he can practice using his knee. When he gets into professional, he can start using his elbow and stuff like that as well. Stuff I'm really excited to see him kind of put together. And with his wrestling, you know, you get that high level like freestyle wrestling. And with that upper body kind of Greco-Roman style wrestling. So what Greco-Roman style wrestling is, is it's wrestling only from like the waist up. So like arms, upper body. That's a little bit, a lot of people relate it to Muay Thai clinching. It's similar, but in Muay Thai, you have the option to knee and stuff like that. I and mean, you can't do hip throws in Muay Thai. But of course, Mr. Montillo is an MMA. All that stuff is good to go. Uh, Mr. Montillo also trains at another academy for his jiu-jitsu and some of his MMA-specific training. He is training a little bit with uh, us as well in regards to MMA stuff, along with Coach Todd, who is a former professional MMA competitor. If you guys don't know Coach Todd, we'll get more into his story later, but he's one of our coaches that we have here at Academy Ventura. So Mr. Montillo also attends a wrestling club in Camarillo, I know, a couple times a week to make sure he stays sharp in his wrestling because that is one of his strong suits. Uh, he also does a lot of one-on-one -on -one training for, with his uh, jiu-jitsu professor as well over there in, I believe it's in Moore Park. He's been training with us here at Putin Muay Thai for a little over a year. He also attended our Thailand training camp that we had in Bangkok earlier this year at Keith Kemton Gym. That was actually something that was, I think, a great experience for him because a lot of things clicked for him. He got to see combat sports at a high level for people who are doing it for a living. And for anybody that's ever been to Thailand that may be listening to this, you guys can tell for sure that the intent that those guys train at in Thailand is completely different than what you'll see here in the United States. But being there and seeing that will help you better prepare for your own competitions or if you're competing over there as well. 
because for them, it's not like something that they get to do for recreation like we get to do over here in the United States or North America or in the Western world, I guess you could say. It's something that they do for a living. So there's definitely a different intent behind their training. And just kind of being around that, you kind of absorb some of that energy and bring that same kind of intensity to your training as well. So I'm really, needless to say, like I said, I'm really excited to see him compete this weekend. I think he's going to do great. He's well prepared. He's wrestling's on point. He's been doing a lot of more time training with us as well. Some one-on-one work as well as getting in uh, training with our team practices on Fridays, getting in more additional sparring and things of that nature. I think he's well prepared for this one. I'm looking forward to seeing his showing this Saturday, and you guys should definitely stay tuned. If you can, I think it's supposed to be broadcast, delayed broadcast on Fox Sports. So Jeremy is on the undercard, but I believe it's one of the few amateur bouts that's going to be televised at some point. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted on our Instagram as well as our website. Along with the competition this weekend, we also have on the following weekend, Saturday, September 28th in Monrovia, California. We have two students that will be competing from our Ventura Academy and our Satellite Academy out in Santa Barbara, Putin Muay Thai Santa Barbara. We have Ralph Garcia from our Ventura Academy, as well as Charlie Minnelli, who's from our Santa Barbara Academy. So Charlie Minnelli is actually trained under Coach Ryan, who's our chief instructor up there in Santa Barbara. This will be Ralph's first time stepping into Muay Thai competition, and this will also be Charlie's second competition that he will be competing in. The event's going to be at Sit Yatong Muay Thai Gym in Monrovia, California. That name should sound familiar if you guys follow Muay Thai at all. Seiya Tong is a very famous Muay Thai gym that originates in Pattaya, Thailand. I was very lucky to visit there in 2010 and to be able to meet Ajahn Yatong Senan, who is the founder of Seiya Tong Muay Thai. So he passed away a couple years ago, and I'm really stoked to be able to have met him. But this gym is actually ran by Crew Walter, who's a direct student under Ajahn Yatong. So he runs a great facility, a great program over there in Monrovia for any of you that are in that area and looking at Muay Thai training, definitely check them out. You're getting the most bang for your buck. Uh, I get a lot of people who always kind of balk at pricing and stuff like that, but I'm going to tell you they're worth every cent that you're getting over there. So the address for there, uh, City of Tong Muay Thai in Monrovia is 260 Taylor Street in Monrovia, California, and uh, they're just off the 210 freeway. About three blocks away from the Monrovia Gold Line. That's the Metro Gold Line that's over there. I don't know if it's technically a subway or a train or a cable car, but needs to say. You can also call them at 626-577-7800 for more details, or if you get lost and need help finding the place. The doors will open at 1.30 p.m. for the event on this Saturday. There is general admission tickets and ringside tickets. General admission tickets are $25, it's cash only, and are available for purchase at both Putin Muay Thai Ventura and Putin Muay Thai Santa Barbara. If you're one of our students, definitely purchase them from us. Uh, one of the things that's important about that is for people to understand why you want to purchase them from your academy. So for anybody else that has uh, maybe other students that are competing within their academy, uh, this, is, this is relevant to you as well. So what happens is a promoter holds a Muay Thai event. And right away, they're already losing money. Let me just tell you that straight up. They're already losing money. So what they do is they give each competitor a stipend of tickets that they're responsible for selling. So when uh, your academy decides to sell some tickets, they basically get direct credit for selling those tickets with a promoter. So the reason why that's important is the promoter, like I said, remember, they're already losing money. But if somebody's selling tickets, that means that they're helping bring money in and helping recovering from that loss. So that's something that's very important on like a business uh, side of things because that promoter is going to be much more likely to ask that academy to come back and compete on their event. Along with this one as well at CEO Tung, uh, Crew Walter's wife, June, uh, she's, she's worked with us since the first one. We actually participated in their first event that they had here as well. Uh, so it's something that's it's very important. But if you guys actually go to the event and you pay for a ticket at the door, 
even if you tell them you're from our academy, they don't track that. They're not that organized. It's not something that you'll really see at any event. So if you're going to go, definitely buy a ticket from the Academy in Ventura or Santa Barbara. If you're listening to this and you have a friend who's competing from your academy or one of the students that's going to be competing, buy a ticket from your academy, guys. That's one of the best ways that you can support your team. So along with that, just so you guys know as well, this event is a no knockout in-gym training event. So the kind of reason for these events uh, it came out, they didn't have these style events when I was first starting, at least they weren't popular. Uh, the reason for these events is we used to have what they would call smoker events. So what a smoker event was, you would have your coach say, hey, you know, around what weight are you? They would know your experience level, like if had you had any uh, matches before, or uh, if you were brand new, if you're nervous, if you got beat up at your last one, whatever it may be. And so they would talk to the host gym that would be holding this, and they would help kind of be a match for somebody who's around your level, or maybe there's a couple matches you'd be able to do that are around your level. And think of these as like sparring matches. So those smokers that we used to have that were like the inner club competitions, uh, they weren't sanctioned back in the day. So what that means is we didn't have those sanctioning bodies like I talked about earlier in the episode that would be regulating these. Here in California, we have the California State Athletic Commission, which you'll also commonly hear referred to as CSAC. So CSAC started shutting these events down because there is like a little bit of liability for the places that are holding these in regards to maybe they're trying to sell liquor or people are getting knocked out, things of that nature. But in my experience, no one was ever seriously injured at these events. Uh, and they were actually a great way for us to get experience back in the day in order to build up to a fight night style promotion that you're seeing a lot of now. So now, smoker events are completely 100% illegal in the state of California. So much so that if you are caught competing in one, or if your coach is caught like in a picture at one, or is tagged in like Facebook, Instagram, uh, if there's even a hit of you being at one of those there's potential for you to be suspended in the state of California as an amateur competitor, as an academy, and as a coach or a corner. Uh, what that suspension is, I mean, it's kind of up to the sanctioning body what they decide to do and what they decide to enforce. But um, that's kind of the details on that. And that's what these in-gym training events are in place of. So what they're doing is they now sanction these events. It is a little bit more money for the gym to hold these because they have to have event insurance now. They have to have an ambulance on site. They have to pay the sanctioning body fee, things of that nature as well. But it's something that you're starting to see more and more of. And I think uh, with the growth of Muay Thai and uh, more Muay Thai competitors being out there, there's definitely a little bit less of a loss, at least from what I can tell. But I haven't actually seen the business end of things on these. I really hope that these guys are making money for holding these events. Because they're very vital for growth within our sport, as I'll get into in a little bit. So one of the things, along with the smokers back in the day, and with these in-gym training events that you're seeing, there is going to be specific uh, training equipment that they would wear. So in an in-gym training event, you'll see them, they can wear like sparring headgear that has like uh, chin guards on it, like chin uh, straps, uh, cheek guards. Uh, you also see a little bit bulkier shin pads, like training style shin pads that you'll see. Maybe like a Fairtex or a Top King shin pad or like a Twins. Things that are a little bit more bulkier, heavier standing. As opposed to like maybe other amateur fight night events where you'll see them wearing more like the sock style shin guards that you'll see that are really inexpensive. Uh, so that's one of the things that you'll see is a little bit different. As well as the glove size. You also see like they're going to be using 16 ounce gloves. They don't have to use lace-up gloves at the in-gym events, like, so they're trying to make them very similar to the smoker events uh, that we used to have. So, and it, uh, like I said, it's a no-knockout event, so think of it like a sparring event. They do have judges there that they're uh, having judge the bouts, so they kind of go back and forth if they're going to declare a winner or a loser. This kind of has to do with state sanctioning and regulation, and it's something that's going to kind of depend. It's going to, we have to kind of ebb and flow with whatever the sanctioning body decides to do that day because they're just there to enforce the rules that are put on them by their boss. So I see a lot of people argue about stuff. And you got to kind of feel for the promoter on this one 
because sometimes I feel like the promoters kind of caught off guard on some of these things as well. So that's one of those beasts that you just kind of have to deal with as participating in these and just understand that, you know, there's, there is some other rule sets that take place here too. Uh, since it is amateur Muay Thai here in California for these kind of training events, along with a no knockout rule, the referee is going to be saying stuff like, hey, bring it back if they're going too hard. He might even call time, bring the competitors in and try to talk them and coach them a little bit to work with each other. Because especially if there's like a mismatch that's going on, because these events are also used to keep active competitors active and new competitors get involved in the sport. So it's something that they're trying to use to help uh, kind of grow these competitors into active athletes. So it's something that uh, I think is very vital for people to understand when they're at these events as well. Because I've seen people booing, I've heard people booing, uh, you know, talking smack about, oh, knock them out, things of that nature. And that's not what these are. Uh, they're for them to show good technique and practice different things. Practice throwing, like, you know, some straight knees. Uh, practice clinching against somebody they don't know in front of a crowd. So that way, their first time doing it isn't like the way I was brought up. It was like, hey, uh, it's time to go. <laughs> You're doing a fight night event, pro-am event for your first time. So a lot of the rule sets, too. Uh, you know, punches, kicks, knees. Uh, no knees to the head. You can punch to the head. Uh, you can kick to the head. There's no face deeps. They say, like, no spinning, heel kicks, things of that, that nature. Um, they, they really do their best to kind of control them. And with that being said, too, the sanctioning bodies that hold these, they also use these as training for new ring officials. So with that, they usually have, like, a more experienced ring official that's helping train these guys. You're going to get a lot of conflicting information because a lot of these guys are new. So... As a coach, it can be kind of frustrating because maybe you have, or you feel you have more experience than these people that are being brought in, but we need more ring officials. That's what it comes down to. We need more ring officials. They need experience. This is the best way for them to get started. It's a low risk event. Uh, you might feel like it's high risk for some people, but it's a good way to help build those people up and give them a start. So that way, their first time doing these aren't at pro events where it's somebody's career that's in the line, or like a high-level amateur event. So, with the ring officials, they're training the inspectors that are in the corner, those are people that control what the competitors are doing back before the competition, checking equipment, uh, controlling the competitors in the corner. Uh, the judges, so like how the judges are working, because they can kind of get critiqued by the chairman that's at the event. The chairman at the, these events are typically the most experienced in these, so the chairman will give them feedback on maybe how they could have scored these a little bit better, ask them a little bit more why, and uh, get better training for those ring officials as well. Uh, not to mention the timekeeper, to make sure the timekeeper gets practice, as well as the referee. So those people, it's very important for them to get practice in these kind of settings. Uh, it's a little bit more like, I guess you could say, homey feeling in the fact that it is inside of a gym. Uh, most of the gyms there too, we're, we're all friends with each other. Uh, a lot of our students may spar with each other and then they're competing with each other. So that's something to consider when you guys are attending these events as well. And that's what I always encourage our students at Putin Muay Thai and Ventura and Santa Barbara to uphold a demeanor of respect for everybody, ring officials included. Our first competitor is Ralph Garcia from Putin Muay Thai Ventura. Mr. Garcia has been training with us for a bit now, I want to say like a little over two years. He's currently in our intermediate program here at Putin Muay Thai. He's actually been attending our leadership training workshops. He's attended, uh, which like is like our instructor training workshops to see if people are interested in becoming leaders within our academy, whether it be cornering. He's actually helped me corner out in Thailand and stuff as well. Uh, he's also attended our Muay Thai training camp in Minkok, and that's where he got that cornering experience, as well as in Phuket. So if you guys don't know where Phuket and Bangkok is, that's actually in Thailand. So Ralph's been over there at uh, Keith Kempton Gym in Bangkok and uh, Sui Thai Muay Thai Gym in Phuket. Uh, along with that help out on the mats as a leadership team member, he's also one of our coaches for our Adult Muay Thai Fundamentals program here at Putin Muay Thai in Ventura. Mr. Garcia has also peeked in his head over there at Putin Muay Thai Santa Barbara as a leadership team member and getting some additional training there as well. This will actually be Mr. Garcia's first time competing in Muay Thai. Uh, I'm not really sure if he's done any other combat sports uh, or competed in them. So I'm really excited to see how he does. The next one, 
it would be Charlie Minnelli, so also known as Charles Minnelli or Will Charlie 38, <laughs> known by his Instagram name. This will be his second event that he's going to be participating in. The first event that he took place, uh, that he actually participated in, was at Yakubi Muay Thai a couple months back. Uh, so Yakubi Muay Thai is in Chatsworth, California. That's a Muay Thai Academy in Chatsworth for anybody that's down there in the area. Um, my good friend Sean Yakubian is the chief instructor there and the founder. He's a K1 competitor, a professional Muay Thai athlete. And, it, you know, our, our similar chord is that my Thai trainer, Kurnakweed, was one of his trainers for Muay Thai when he made the transition from kickboxing to Muay Thai as well. Uh, Kurnakweed actually still is over there. Every once in a while, you can find him hanging out there a few nights a week because, you know, he just, like Sean, is close by his house and stuff. So I like to go down there and go visit them. Great people. Uh, that was also a no knockout in gym training event, as I described it earlier. Uh, Charlie was declared the winner at the event. So to kind of go into that, they don't always do declare winner, declare loser at these events. It kind of goes on that ebb and flow I talked about earlier, depending on what the chairman of the event decides on that day. So uh, Mr. Minnelli has been training with Coach Ryan in Santa Barbara for quite some time now. Uh, he looks to make another strong showing at this event on September 28th in Monrovia. He's actually been down here in the Academy of Ventura. He's been doing some sparring with me as well and some clinching. Really great guy, great attitude, and freaking hilarious. <laughs> Definitely go check out his Instagram. Some of his stuff on there is kind of out of this... Uh, I mean, I can't really describe it. You look at it like, oh, this is this is dumb. But just just wait for the punchline because this guy is freaking hilarious. Uh, Charlie is also a father. Uh, he's got a sweet daughter. She's come over there and supported her dad when he's training for his competitions and stuff as well. Uh, and with, with that being said, too... Uh, Mr. Minnelli is a part of our competition team at Putin Muay Thai in Santa Barbara and part of the Putin Muay Thai family. So definitely, if you guys want to come out, if you're listening from Santa Barbara, uh, hit up Coach Ryan for the tickets. Uh, like I said, they're $25. Uh, you can get them in Ventura as well if you guys are in the Ventura area. They all go into the same pool for those students. So as a family, you know, Putin Muay Thai family, that whole commission pool goes into the whole team. So just something to keep in mind for you guys as well. So that's going to be it for today's podcast for episode one. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Please let us know how you like the content. If you want to hear more of one thing, less of the other. If you want to get some special guests on here. If you want to hear one of the coaches on here. Or if you want to hear one of our competitors. Or if you guys a student that want to share some of the things that you've kind of had in the academy. Some training experiences you've had. Or, uh, you know, really anything Muay Thai related. I really encourage you guys to reach out, share this podcast with your friends as well. Uh, if you're here in Ventura or Santa Barbara, definitely spread the word about Putin Muay Thai. You know, just so you guys know, we do have a VIP month coming up here in October. So if you don't know what a VIP month is, just to tell you guys, we do like a, a cash pool for uh, referrals during the month of October. Uh, as well as some other gifts that we're going to be giving out. It's a really cool time to get your friends in, your coworkers, other people to kind of experience Muay Thai. Because, you know, one of the things I can always uh, tell everybody is Muay Thai really helped me and helped change my life. And I think it's something that can help everybody. And I hear it, you know, day in, day out from a lot of our students that help change their life. So let's work on helping spread that with other people and get them involved in martial arts because I think it's something that's very beneficial. And, you know, age isn't an excuse, guys. You know, age is not an excuse. I've had people up into their 70s that just begin training with us. So it's something that anybody can do. We start people as young as four years old. Okay? So with that being said, guys, be sure to subscribe. This is Crew Jonathan. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Have a great day. So what you